Welcome back my designer friends, there are 7 design videos I'm going to release in the following order. Working with PM, PM interview, working with UXR, UXR interview, Entry interview, app critique, app problem solving. And today we're looking at the first one about PM interviews, interviewing with PMs. If you apply for a UX designer, product designer role, likely you have a round of interview with a product manager, PM in your on-site interview. So we're gonna look at who are product managers, what do they do, what do they care about, what's the dynamic between product manager and designers. I'm gonna share some of my first-hand experience working as a designer in tech in Silicon Valley and sprinkle some of my thoughts and opinion on top. By the end of this video, you should get a sense of what interacting with PMs will be like for your next internship or your first full-time job. This, as you know, gonna be another information-rich video, so grab your favorite drink. Mm. And let's get into it, yo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley putting this whole PM interview thing into the design process. If the end goal is to find how to better work with PMs, the first thing to do is, of course, to do your research, to understand the users, which will be the PMs. And that leads to the first part. Who are the PMs? What do they do? One quick example I can show you. We can look at a product designer role from one of my favorite companies, Square or Block. All right, let's see, as the Connect Devices product manager, you drive the strategy. What else? You will collaborate with designers, engineers, analysts, marketers, and other team members. Collaboration. Building a new strategy. Shape the direction, influence product strategy, and establish practices to address customer needs. Mm, needs. Planning, scoping, prioritization of project, entire roadmap and project requirements, goals, constraints, write test plans, manage backlog, working with data analytics, understand the product usage, Identify opportunities, deliver results through collaboration, cross-functional teams, clear written communication. Mm. In other words, what they focus on is to ensure the success of the product. So the PMs will pull together the right people, designers, engineers, whoever needs to help develop the product and launch the product. They focus on the higher level, directions and strategy, planning that help lead to the success of the product. Hmm, what do they care about? They care about mainly two things, metrics and money. It might sound like I'm painting PMs as the evil characters here. Well, yes and no. They are important to the company, don't get me wrong. So first things first, metrics. That means they're very quantitative. They're very close to numbers, to data. That's the primary driver of decision making. They either have a really close collaboration with the data team or they manage all the analytics themselves. Next is money. Money, money, money. By money, I mean business. Product managers are essentially business managers. They will make sure the company is building the right product that people need or want so that people will pay for it and in return generate revenues and profits for the company. And they are definitely really close to the business team, finance team, deals maybe, Whichever team that screams money. As you know, product, business, revenue, profit, money, they are synonyms at some level. This is actually not all bad because somebody has to think about the business, right? We as designers should have the knowledge and understanding of it. But our focus, I have to say, is not coming up with a business plan or monitoring analytics. We are trying to design the best product experiences that people want to have and keep having. There are more two PMs that you can learn about, I recommend build and chaos monkeys pick them up if you like and maybe that's a video for another time so and now let's move to the next topic the dynamic between pms and designers there are three organization structures that i know of that will set the tone for this dynamic the design team is parallel to eng and product you can easily see this in the very design driven companies like maybe apple and airbnb it's not very common in silicon valley next Design team is under Eng team. Very true in an engineering driven company. Not so common though, but it could happen. Lastly, the design team is under the product team. It's actually fairly common nowadays as you start to see more and more product designers role instead of UX designer roles everywhere. If that's the case, that means PMs and designers are actually on the same side. You guys are friends, or at least you should be friends according to this structure. So in theory, if you run into problems about engineering resources, 
you should go to the PM and they should help you out. But that might not work out every time and I will go deeper into that later in the video. So next, what is it like working with them? And let me elaborate that by walking you through an example project. Let's say you are a product designer at Instagram and you work with a PM. That means the PM is managing Instagram as a product and needs to make sure Instagram as a product will succeed. To do that, the PM will set some design metrics and keep their eyes on them. For Instagram, it's probably DAU, MAU, maybe time spent on Instagram, posts per user per month, something like that. Well, actually we can find out because Meta is a publicly traded company we can find it on their investor relations website. We can look at their uh, Q2 earnings report. And hmm, I was right. DAU, MAU, and ARPU. Yep, that makes sense. Average revenue per user. That makes sense. That makes sense. Then the PM can aim at one metric. Say they want to increase daily active users by 5%. And then here's how things can start to unfold. First, they will come up with some high level strategies and directions. As you remember, that's what PMs do. They will write a project brief or project requirement doc, PRD, depending on which company you're at. It will outline the project background, the context, assess metrics, use cases, functional capabilities, etc. Ideally, at this point, they should loop you in to write the project brief. After that, one of the two things can happen. One, you guys will brainstorm together. You will think of ideas, design a draft concept, and then we discuss. For me, I typically just print them out, print them on the wall, and then the PM and I will just look at them together in front of it, and maybe circle things and annotate when we are discussing the flow. And that's actually how I worked with my PM at DoorDash. True story. In terms of meeting cadence, I would say every other day. Another possibility is that the PM will just hand you off this direction and you are free to imagine what's gonna happen. You on your own. But you would definitely ping them here and there every now and then to get more clarity on the project brief and show them early ideas. In that world, it really depends on where you are at in your project. You could be meeting with them every other day or maybe once a week or even once every two weeks. After the project is kicked off with Eng and design, you tend to meet with them less frequently since you are busy wrapping up the handoff to engineers. They might come check in with you weekly, but mostly you have your own time. For my three years of working with PMs in Silicon Valley, in tech, my overall impression is that communication is the key of PM design collaboration. That's just a fancy way to say you have to talk a lot with them. So prepare to talk. The closer you work with them, the more you're gonna talk. If you're not used to talking a lot, it really will drain your energy. If I have questions of why I have to do this, I'll go to the PM and say, hey, just a quick question. Why do I have to add more steps uh, in the flow to get the user signature? Or I don't think we should sell users data. Then I will say, so this is actually not a great idea. It could backfire. Let's think of some other solutions. If the PM gets more information about a project, they will come to me and say, Hey Justin, Charlie just joined our team. You know what that means, right? Now we get more entries for this project. They could also go, Hey Justin, I just heard back from the Modicom team and they have this campaign they want to do and they want three screenshots of the app. Can you get them those in two weeks? So that's pretty much what it's like. Next. Why PMs can be hard to work with and how to counter that. No, 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 no. I, I meant to say, how do we work with PMs more effectively? I have five techniques, five ways, and I put them in a slightly catchy way for you to memorize them. Push them, ask them, ignore them, show them, copy them. So first one, push them. If you believe in your ideas, tell them again and again, but don't do it on the same day. If you told them already today, work on your argument, Go back to them, tell them again next week. Take time to think about it, come up with a new argument or point of view, and then keep pushing them. Pushing back is not a bad thing, and the point here is not about annoying them. It showcases that you really believe in this direction that's going to work. Perhaps you're right all along. Maybe you just need to support your design decision better and tell them again and again until they finally get it. Doing it right will showcase that you know what you're doing and you will earn the respect over time. You can find real examples in how Steve Jobs respected their employees more after they stood strong, they pushed back because they knew they were right. Next, ask them. Fire questions at them. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do it for the sake of doing it. As a designer, you should have a point of view of how things should work. 
the more questions you ask them, the more they will start to question themselves about the same thing. And eventually, they could agree with you. Ah, I think Justine was right. Yeah, let's keep the animation. Of course I'm right. Next, ignore them. Don't take no for an answer. Ignore the no. Take it as, tell me another idea or keep iterating it. It's also very possible that the PMs don't have the same context and understanding as you do. So their no can mean, Uh, I actually don't understand this. Please educate me, but I'm too embarrassed to tell you that. Designers do know a lot about human psychology. The PMs don't. And remember, they are more quantitative. And psychology and design are more on the qualitative side. So teach them something new. Close the knowledge gap and then present your design concept again. Next, show them. True story here, I had a project that I was working on that was originally scheduled for one week of design work. How is that possible? Yeah, it's not possible. So I had to push back. I had to ignore their proposal. Then I drafted something really quick, design process with their own faces and all the possible loops that I can loop through them and an eight week schedule breakdown into those phases in the design process. Then I printed it out, I handed it in front of the product manager and explained, so this is a design process, this is a schedule I have in mind, and as designers, we have to be thorough, we have to go through all the phases in the design process to make sure the design is usable, it's functional, it meets the user's need, it addresses the pain point, it helps solve the problem. And you know what? It worked. I got seven weeks of design time in the end. Another way is to tell them a story, to let them feel the power of the concept. Let them connect the dots themselves. Let them imagine a scenario. Let them walk through your design in a user's shoes. Have a story that resonates with them, that moves them, and then very likely, they're gonna buy it. Last thing, copy them. What did we learn from our user research? They care about metrics and money. So we can adopt their lingo, their way of working, and use it to our advantage as designers. Do you care about metrics and money? Well, let's talk metric and money. How much will my design increase DAU? Uh, I think it will because this is a really fun feature and people are going to love it. So they can't wait to open the app every day to use it, to play with it, to look at it. How much will my design increase average revenue per user? This design can at least get our users to pay $2 per month because this feature is so useful. They can't live without it. Bam, we talk like a PM and became the PM. The PM and I are now on the same wavelength. They trust me more. They start to question me less down the road. Those are my five techniques to better work with product managers in tech in Silicon Valley. And of course, it doesn't stop there. How do you work with other team members? How do you work with engineers? How would these kind of collaboration show up in a UX job interview? They're quite essential for designers to understand and I have used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support this channel. Keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.